do you remember the moment when you were like, I think I'm going to go for this? Like, I'm going to try and become a senator? Oh, senator. Um, yeah. I do remember the time I thought about doing it. And um, Paul Wellstone was um, senator from Minnesota. He got elected in... Um, in uh, 92 and uh, an upset victory and he was a great progressive uh, senator and he was a friend of mine and 2002 he was uh, running for re-election and he was in a dead heat with Norm Coleman um, and he had to vote in October on the Iraq war and he was going to vote against it in a large majority of Minnesotans were for going to war. And Paul told me this is probably going to be the end of my career because he was in a neck and neck race. And he voted against it. And the next poll that came out had him up by seven. Oh, wow. It went the other way. Because it went the other way because Minnesotans respect a politician who votes his conscience. Then his plane went down and with Paul and his wife and his daughter and three aides and two pilots died. And Coleman ended up winning the race. And three months after he, Norman Coleman got into office, he did a, a interview with Roll Call, which is a Capitol Hill newspaper. And he said, to be blunt, I'm a 99% improvement over Paul Wellstone. Hmm. And I said, who the fuck is going to beat this guy? Hmm. So... That's very West Wing. I, I don't mean to make light of this person who died or anything, but when it gets personal like that, there's a West Wing moment mm. where someone puts down Martin Sheen, someone who died. It's mm. almost, it's, it might have been inspired by this for all I know. And he was like, well, guess what? Game on. Like now it's personal sort of thing. But yeah, it lit yeah. a fire under you. Yeah, and that's not a reason to run for the Senate, I guess, but uh, I moved back to Minnesota and um, I... In 2006, I just campaigned for Democrats who were running in the state, and I found that crowds would turn out for me, and so I decided to go for it. Because of comedy? I think because of comedy. I also written these books, like Rush Limbaugh's A Big Fat Idiot and Other Observations, which was... I, I've written four number one New York Times bestsellers. Wow. Not to brag about my four... What do you pull down for those? Number one, huh? What do you pull down for those? Those are... They're, it's... It's good. It's good. <laughs> Lies and Lying Liars was the biggest, and that uh, that was about Fox, and Fox sued me. Oh, wow. And thank you so much. My wife wanted to get a band, a marching band, to go in front of Fox going, thank you very much, boom. Thank you very much. <laughs> Nicest thing that any... I mean, it was amazing. Because it put so much attention there, everyone had to read yeah. it. Yeah. And yeah. they were laughed out of court. They They... The, name, they, uh, the title of the book was Lies and Lying Liars Who Tell Them a Fair and Balanced Look at the Right. And so they sued me for copyright or tried to stop the book from being published because of, quote, copyright infringement. Fair and balanced. Fair and balanced. And the thing is, is that the case law is clear that if you're, if the thing, if the title is, th- is something you're actually writing about, mm-hmm. it's fine. <laughs> so right. they were just... Laughed out of court, and but O'Reilly was so mad at me uh, for I had made I made him really look bad at a book expo, mm. and that he insisted they sue, and it was it was an O'Reilly sue. They had to do it to they had to do it to O'Reilly. please him. Yeah, and I'm uh, um, Floyd Abrams, who was number one, you know, uh, First Amendment lawyer in the country, took my case. He had done Pentagon Papers and all that kind of stuff. And he calls me up, and he told me not to go to court, you know, for it. And he said, we won. I said, Floyd, a chimp could have won this. <laughs> and later, there was a documentary made about the case, and he wrote, and he was interviewed, and he said, a monkey could have won this. And I call him up, I go, I didn't say monkey, I said chimp. And he said, what's the difference? I go, well, chimp is funny, monkey isn't. Chimp. A chimp. Even MailChimp, which is a sponsor, is funny. I'm just kidding. They're not a sponsor. <laughs> yeah, Chimp is funnier. Also yeah. close to And he testified and- once in front of the, uh, I was on the Judiciary Committee. Okay. I wasn't, a, I'm not a lawyer, but I played one in a sketch. 
That's what I like to say. <laughs> and uh, Floyd was testifying, and I just made him have to. I told that story. I made him. <laughs> you got it right on the record. I got it on the record. It's in the congressional record. <laughs> that, and he misquoted me. So you decide to go for it for this beautiful reason. You get sued for your books that you made a lot of money for. Mm -hmm. Then you run, and I, it was a very, very close race. 312 votes. I clobbered him. It was the narrowest clobbering in history. You clobbered him by 312 12 votes, yeah. Roughly an IHOP, like a full IHOP. It, 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 this recount, we, I actually won the recount in time to be seated with my colleagues, but the uh, Republicans went to court and uh, delayed me like six months. But when I got there, it was the 60th Democratic vote and I was 60th Democratic senator, so that's how we got the Affordable Care Act. And did you... I don't care for that act. Did you... <laughs> Just kidding. Did you... Uh, great ha fucking act. Thank God we got that damn thing. <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah. Did you have any imposter syndrome? I mean, people have imposter syndrome for less. For some reason, I didn't. <laughs> and for I think it was basically that... I knew why I was doing it, and uh, it, was, it ceased to be, you know, revenge or something. But I knew why I was doing it. I was doing it for all the right reasons. It's similar to your very pure and to me sometimes challenging, just love of comedy. Like you just wanted to do comedy because you just want to laugh, and you just want to do what makes you laugh and make people laugh. That's that's a very pure intent. Yeah, but I really kind of think that's any good comedian that's that's what, what they're it after. is right yeah and i'm not sure that every politician i went goes into it for the same reasons i hear you i went in i'm challenged by that just because i know when i'm off access it's because i'm doing comedy because it makes me high and when i'm on access i'm and feeling good and i'm in the flow and doing good work to be honest it's because i'm going on stage because i want to make everybody laugh not for the feeling you get from making people laugh. Does that I make see, sense? I see. That makes a lot of sense. But yeah. when I, I'm with you, I got yeah, into this yeah, because yeah. I want to do what makes me laugh, but then it gets very tempting mm -hmm. to get, it's the ring of power, Tolkien's ring of power. Now you're like, oh, this gets me, this yeah. gets me off. Yeah. And then that can become your new reason to do it. Yeah. And my wife has to recalibrate me every once in a while and she's like, okay, you didn't like it, but didn't you do your job? Didn't you make them laugh? Like, you're, like it's not really about you being like, I'm a golden boy, you know what I mean? Which clearly is my wound, not yours. I'm sorry, you have to live that way. <laughs> I did put that on you in a strange moment. <laughs> and what a great response. You made it weird, you made it weird, you made it weird, oh yeah. You made it weird, you made it weird.